Hello, good morning, and welcome to this Dawn Buster's Taste Challenge. It is 6.17 a.m. Standard Time, Central Standard Time, on uh, November 24th, 2018. And we have, from many decades ago, but I can't pinpoint the year, was not able to do that, King Robert II. Blended Scotch whiskey, no age statement. Distilled, aged, distilled, blended, aged, and bottled in Scotland. 1.75 milliliter bottle for $18.99. Now, um, I know it was bought by Ian McLeod Company in 1968, 50 years ago, so it had been around before then. How long? I can't tell you because I don't know. I wish I did. All right, so here we go. <sighs> Didn't really want it to drip. These big bottles, they're nice, but the pouring action isn't so nice. Okay, and then some people will say, some people will say, uh, oh, it's not so bad. Now, these big cans are bad too, these big beer cans, the big 25 ounce or 32 ounce. They invariably spill and but some people will say no no it's not that bad if you just turn it this way and you put on the silver cap the golden cap and you hop on one leg then you can control the wing monkeys for three times you get three chances to control the wing monkeys and that's all you got to do well i don't want to wear a golden cap and hop around on one leg to be able to pour the can i just want to pour it without it spilling everywhere okay and then we have Scoresby. I know this was introduced in 1960. It's a Diageo brand. Well, at least until January 2019, that's when the sale should be complete for the acquisition of Scoresby and 18 other brands, including Canadian, the uh, Seagram's VO by Sazerac from Diageo. Made a big deal, a big sale. It's like a half a billion dollars. Okay, Scoresby's kind of low profile. It's not like real popular, but you see it around. It's too expensive in Louisiana. It's half the price in Georgia. It's like fifteen sixty nine for this bottle here, glass bottle. He said that's the same bottle as Cabin still. Uh, Cabin Fever, I mean, yeah, it is because it's the same company. That's one of their standard bottles. They put a lot of different things. In Georgia, it'd be like eight ninety nine. I can't explain that. That's just that's the answer. Okay, and it seems to sell all right in Louisiana. Thirty two dollars for the big one point seven five liter. You see it at Dorgnax and whatnot, and people buy it. So maybe people here perceive it as something better than it is, and in Georgia, it's considered a budget brand. I really can't tell you the answer. Um, I just know that is the fact of the matter. We have some viewers. Hey, Bill, I was just thinking about you the other day. Bill McIntosh says, morning, Ronald. Happy holidays to you and the guys in the Hangout group. Please pass that along. I will. Still watching. Keep me on the invite list, please. I'll be back. Cheers. Okay, I will keep you on the invite list. I do keep a lot of people on the invite list. And maybe they get aggravated when I invite them. And after a while, I'll just drop them off the list. But people are funny. Not you, but some people are peculiar. If you invite them, invite them. Why do you keep inviting me? And then if you don't invite them, they'll say, I'm insulted. It hurt my feelings. You never invited me. Well, I mean, you know, we invited you for two straight years. You didn't join. But it's funny that people are reluctant to just tell you things. Where I, me, personally, I would just tell somebody what I'm thinking. Okay, but anyway, Rainbow Sky says, hi, Ronald. Happy holidays. Hope things are going well. So we're glad to hear from Rainbow Sky and Bill 
down in Florida and Rainbow Sky said that whiskey is very amber colored. Yeah, I'm about to show the colors. It was raining last night, but it didn't rain for too long. Okay, um, it's daylight now, basically. It's uh, dawn, dawn busters. The one on my left hand, the Ian McLeod, is amber. The one on my right hand is pale straw, like you would see with Clan McGregor. The McLeod is no age statement. So how long is it age? I couldn't tell you. Maybe six years. I don't know. I really have no clue. I have maybe four. Um, the Scoresby is three years. I know that because it says it on the bottle. They're both 80 proof. Now, the difference with Scoresby, though, it's bottled in New Jersey, okay? No, that's Clan McGregor. Scoresby is bottled, I think, in uh, Connecticut. Diageo must have some corporate offices there and maybe a bottling plant because it always says Norwalk, Connecticut. Must be a pretty big place. Uh, the Buchanan's was a blowout. All right. Buchanan's Deluxe, age 12 years, just destroyed the Ian McLeod. Ian McLeod's um, it's King Robert II. But that shouldn't be a big surprise. Now, here's one I'm going to review one day on on written reviews. I saved it, the Balvini triple cask, age 12 years. It tasted good, but um, it was kind of dull, really. And I said, this is a single malt triple cask using sherry and bourbon and another kind of cask, maybe another type of bourbon, or was it cognac or something? But... Um, I don't know. You think that they go through all of that and it's aged 12 years and it's a big production, it would have more bountiful flavor. But I understand a lot of people love the really low, low, low profile flavors. I call it dull or bland. Other people say it's not dull or bland. You just don't get it. You don't get it. I know I don't. And I can't get, get, how you say that word, get it. <laughs> Unless I go to an airport anyway, a travel only. I might go to New Orleans airport one day and just see. I don't know what would be the purpose of that, to see, oh, I can get these travel exclusive whiskeys and gin and rum and brandy. And I got a whole cabinet full of dozens of bottles. I mean, that would be stupid, right? Maybe in 10 years, I'll do it. There's a United States in 10 years. But it could be just some other republic or something, dictatorship that might still allow you to buy whiskey. Okay, under certain extreme controls <laughs> oh i shouldn't say that because it'd probably be the other way around if i have any say so in it it'll be the other way around with the freedom the government not trying to outlaw menthol cigarettes and tell you how to think and regulate your life Um, I got to be careful not to look because the amber color will give it away. It'll be a dead giveaway, you know. The aroma, mm, the flavor, uh, uh, mm, me, me, mm, probably won't be too different. Now, on Tuesday, I have another Dawn Busters planned for King Robert II versus uh, something. I can't remember. I have a bad short-term memory. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100 Pipers and then JW Dance on Thursday. So I'll try to do the Heaven Hill brands that I've got. Try to go. I try to go company by company and make it a little more consistent. Um, so, yeah, good, good long term memory, but bad short term. When you're elderly, when I become elderly, it could be a problem, right? Because they, they'll say, why you didn't come see me? Well, I was here yesterday. No, you weren't because there's something that deteriorates and then you just can't remember things short term. But then they'll, you might say, oh, remember in 1973? And they have like a clear 
absolutely clear memory of that. I remember what people were wearing, where they were standing, but what just happened. And that's why a lot of them need the uh, assisted living because they might leave the fire on the stove. Not even realize it. You will age and you will die. Maybe young, maybe not old, maybe young. I watched some of the stuff people put on Facebook and I said, they must think they're immortal. <laughs> but they're not. All right. Neither am I, neither are you. Okay. No comments. Okay. I, I, well, a reason I check from time to time is because I don't want to ignore people. <clears throat> it's time. It is now time for the challenge, the taste, aroma and taste challenge. And I'll, then I'll go walk half a mile. And then later, a little while later, I'll walk another half mile. And then later today, I'll walk another half mile. I read the whole sports section. A wild game last night, West Virginia and Oklahoma, Oklahoma won. But I don't know why people say, oh, those games were so great. It was so great, 59 to 56. Great game, really, because everybody was scoring at will. And there's no defense. Um, If you want to call that great, I would call that a sign of a bad problem with both teams in the indication that neither one would ever win the champ national championship. If you want to, it's like watching arena ball, arena football. Okay, now the aroma here is, I'm trying to pick up some aroma. It's like, okay, where's the smell? Okay, where's the smell? It's sort of like vacant. And I let them breathe enough with the rambling and stuff. Did you say your name was Rambling Rose? There's a faint peat and some alcohol, but really there isn't a lot of aroma over there, over there, over there. Spread the word what you heard over there, that the scotch is coming, the scotch is coming. And it's the same here. It's almost like the identical aroma, two different colors, identical aroma, same country, Scotland, the kingdom of Scotland. And then remember, the king of Scotland became the king of England in 1603. The, the English king didn't take over Scotland. The Scottish king inherited the English throne, okay? And then they decided to unite the two countries in what? 1707, the Act of Union, wasn't it 07? That's why they combined the two flags, the Scottish flag, the blue flag with the white X, and then the white flag with the red cross, cross of St. George, who slayed the dragon. That goes back into... Christology, but um, same symbol of Russia, by the way. But um, and that's why they have that Union flag. And then when Ireland was united with them in 1801 as a triplicate kingdom, they added the Irish that red cross, for, red X for Ireland. Okay, and Northern Ireland still part of the Union. That, well, enough of the history lesson. <laughs> but since it's King Robert II of Scotland, you know, you bring all that up. It's smoky. It's PT. It has a grain alcohol underbody, but not an unpleasant or harsh or nasty grain alcohol underbody but it's there even that little uh it gets kind of a little ragged there underneath but it gives us a little character it has a little character i thought i thought that ben balvini i didn't want john and Ely wanted to examine balvini and which would have been a nice video but i i vetoed that 
that you might say, what gives you the right to veto? Well, I mean, if you got two people talking about a hangout and one doesn't want to do it, that's a veto, right? He could have done it, but I did it. And I, my reasoning, though, was not cavalier or capricious. I said I didn't feel comfortable doing a review or an examination off of a or an examination of a, a tiny little midget bottle, 50 milliliter. It's not enough drinking on it and thinking on it to give it a proper examination. If I had a full size bottle, even a 375, I would go for it. But I didn't feel comfortable with the little mini bottle. It's sort of like saying, oh, well, I watched. Um, I watched a little 15 minute summary of that movie. And I'm going to tell you all about the movie. You can't. That doesn't make sense. You could do it. You say, well, I got the gist of it. It's like I watched the video crib notes, cliff notes, the cliff notes. But how are you going to evaluate it? Okay, over here to the right, whatever color it is, I know I'm not looking. This one is more just grain alcohol. It's just like, <laughs> what you get with these American blended, but you see the American blended whiskeys, they'll have more of a bourbon upside taste because that's what they're blended with almost invariably. It'll be 80, 75 to 80. Well, let me retract because I got that King Square. Let's say 70 to 80% grain alcohol, and then you'll have... 20 to 30 percent straight bourbon whiskey or some kind of straight whiskey but he's usually usually bourbon so your up taste your upside taste would be the bourbon but on the blended scotch whiskeys the upside taste is the malt whiskey that's where your flavor is coming from the blended the, the column still grain whiskey is just giving you the body the filler if you want to call it filler call it filler with budweiser it's rice that rice beer liquor rice beer that's the filler okay you get a little pd barley bread dough thing smokiness nah not too much i don't know i gotta think about these a little bit start but it's a challenge <laughs> marius lister says hello do you like tuborg beer no but i don't know because i've never had it you see i they don't sell it around here they did in the 1970s but you know tuborg might have been one of those contract brewed things where it was the danish beer of kings this NFL game is brought to you by the Danish Beer of Kings, Tubor Gold. But um, it might have been made by Miller over here <laughs> under a license like they did with Lowenbrow. But I know Carlsberg owns Tubor, and I know it's a famous brand, and I would try it. But I, I can't get it. You see this one, there's a smoke underbody also. It's a little strange, but there's a smokiness all the way through. It, it's at the top a little bit, but it comes in more on the X, on the backwash, the exhalation. So, huh, that's interesting. Very interesting. So foggy. Man, you could just forget smoke. If you say, I just love the smoky qualities of scotch. Well, you wouldn't love this because it doesn't have any. It's funny about these, these I almost said beer, these, these whiskeys, because if you do them in isolation, just a single review, you'll pick up things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you do it in a side by side and those things aren't there. It's like they're muted by the competition. It's strange, but it's true. And this one just tastes like 
straight up grain alcohol corn liquor <laughs> yeah kind of like that and you get a little wood it's probably they're using wood they're using used bourbon barrels it's not terrible And there is some peat qualities. And they're talking about, oh, we use way better grain alcohol than those other people that make blended whiskey for budget prices. Yeah, but it's not translating as being so great. Because why does it taste so not great? This has got to be the Ian McLeod, the uh, King Robert II. I mean, I could say Heaven Hill blended whiskey, Kentucky blended whiskey is not terrible. It's not terrible. It's six dollars nineteen cents plus tax, or it might have gone up to six fifty nine. They went up forty cents. But it's big. But I know, I know you can find Heaven Hill blended somewhere for five ninety nine. I know you can find McCormick for five ninety nine. But what are you getting? Not much. It's serviceable. This is serviceable. That's about as far as it goes. I got a feeling if I bought that Win Dixie blended whiskey, blended Scotch whiskey, it'd be the same thing. But I'm not buying some big plastic bottle of Win Dixie blended Scotch whiskey that's bottled by Sazerac in Louisville, Kentucky. I don't think I'm going to do that. To experience all that nothingness. This one here has more character, but it doesn't have that much character, to tell you the truth. It's not exactly uh, fabulous. It's kind of like a little smoky, like I said, underneath, and a little peaty, and a lot of grainy, <laughs> you know, a lot of corn, a lot of corn liquor underneath the bottle, as Lou Reed would say. Last shot should have killed me. Pour me another drink. So when you quit, you quit. But you always wish that you knew it was your last shot. All right. This is it. Officer, how can you be so unkind to arrest a man who's driving while blind? Okay. So if you go out tonight, don't you give Johnny Walker a ride? All right. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that this, I'm not looking, I'm not cheating. That would be pretty insane, right? You'd be a real sick maniac to get on the internet and try to cheat in a King Robert II <laughs> versus Scoresby whiskey video. I mean, that, that would be pretty bad. And pretty sad. And when your mouth is dry, you're getting plenty high. All right, so here we go. This is the Scoresby. My only scores be. I'm gonna say scores be. I hope I'm right. I know I'm right because I could. Or wait, am I right? <gasps> ah, that's King Robert II. Ouch. Ah, ah, the horror, the horror. It was though heaven had come down to earth in the form of gardenias. Oh well, I'm very shocked, disturbed, dismayed, and not to mention highly perplexed and troubled. Do you like Baltica beer? Rainbow Sky asks. Yes, I like it. I don't love it, but I like it, especially the Baltica 9. And I get comments from Russians all the time, people in white Russia or the Russian Federation saying, oh, that's garbage beer. Only drunks drink that. You're stupid. The great Russia, the great Russia hates it. You are the terrible imperialist American who likes <laughs> Baltica 
eight. That's what it's what is it, Baltica eight or nine? What's the will of high strong, high strength malt liquor? They get really wound up about it. You have a jaw of traitor. They just go on and on. I say, well, to me, it tastes okay. It's like red horse beer from the Philippines. No. And then some of the Filipinos will be like, I drank that stuff. I mix gin with it. And then I tear up the house and I get arrested. And I say, oh, okay, that sounds kind of negative, kind of like a negative lifestyle. The ninth one, Baltica 9. Yeah, I like it. I get a lot of controversial statements about the Red Horse Ale. It's kind of fun to read the comments. They get very irate. Some are positive, but it's almost like they're positive from like a negative lifestyle viewpoint. Oh, yeah, I've been drinking that stuff for years. I got a lot of problems. I'm like, oh, well, I'm sorry about that. And then, but there's no middle ground with the red with the red horse. No middle ground. There's no middle ground. There's no moderate voices, right? No one says, yeah, it's pretty good. No, nah. it's like Baltica 9. There's no middle ground. It's like Budweiser. You never get a middle ground with Budweiser. People saying, well, it's good, but here's some negative things about it. But I think it's a tolerable product. No, it's either it's the devil, it's the devil, or I love Budweiser, man. My family grew up with Budweiser, and if you don't like it, we'll fight in the streets. No gloves. I say, wow, people are so divisive about Budweiser. So such a lightning rod product. I think the most enjoyable part is to watch people go berserk over con over consumer products. I mean, Baltica is good. Two sides to everything, I guess. Yes. Two sides to everything, unless you're in one, a single dimension. Now, um, well... I got it wrong. I don't know what to say except I got it wrong. I wasn't exactly thrilled with Scoresby to start with. So Yorn says sunrise. Sunrise. Surprise. Civilized man. Okay. Scores be very rare blended scotch. Yeah, it's so rare you can get it at Walmart. Yeah, it's really rare. And I like how they say possesses mellowness to mellowness <coughs> to please the exacting taste of the connoisseur. Well, I must not be a connoisseur because to me it tastes like grain whiskey. I mean, um, if you want something that's kind of bland and tastes like fairly ragged grain alcohol by Scoresby, then you can say you're a connoisseur, I guess. If you like something that's slightly better, but let's emphasize the word slight, you can get King Robert II, but I'm going to tell you right now, let me say this to you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. If I was looking to buy either one of these, and I would not be looking to buy either one of these, this, they will not be a repurchase, okay? But if I was, for the sake of argument, I would only shop price because the difference is so minimal. I mean, I got them confused, okay? That's why I got them confused. The difference is so minimal that you not. there's no... There, there really is no trade-off. It's a practic there's practically no trade-off. You say, well, it's cheap. I know that's the trade-off. You can pay a low price and you get a low thing. Now I said the Balvenie was bland, but I didn't say it tastes like ragged grain alcohol, of course, because it's not made with grain alcohol. It's made with all malt, malt whiskey, single malt whiskey. Uh, All right. 
King Robert's got a little bit more character, but it's it's so little that I'm gonna tell you price, price, and only, only, only price. And if we're talking about price, why not just go get the dang Win Dixie? Win Dixie, yeah. I didn't see a caliber scotch at Walmart. Okay, I didn't see that. So they got rum, they got caliber spice rum. I mean, they got caliber Canadian whiskey, they got caliber um, gin. All kind of caliber stuff. But at Winn-Dixie, they got Winn-Dixie brand. Makes sense, right? Uh, it's, it says right there, the Founders Company. You say, who's the Founders Company? Louisville, Kentucky. It's Sazerac, okay? They probably make more money doing contract work than they do on their own brands. But they sometimes have that for $12.99 for the 1.75 milliliter. I kid you not, $12.99 on a deep discount. Why wouldn't you just buy that? I'm sure it's comparable to these two things. It's like cheap. You get it? Cheap. <laughs> Yorn said, I'm still waiting for you to gurgle. I'm not gurgling. I swallowed it all, man. I swallowed it all, man. All right. Well, that was a fascinating exploration of the bottom. And I mean the bottom shelf. Like you say, what's lower than those two? Uh the floor. Jeff Knapp says, have a great day of college football, Jay. Go Buckeyes. Cheers. I'd be a little worried if I was Ohio State today. That looks like a really dangerous game for them. You know, Ohio State could, well, they'd probably beat Michigan because Michigan's even more suspect, more susceptible to calamitous losses than Ohio State. You know who I'm going to go watch. But um, if I was LSU, Louisiana State University, I'd be terrified tonight. Playing Texas A&M in Texas? No, that's a scary game. All right. Well, we've, we've done it. So get ready because... The next two taste challenges scheduled for Tuesday and Thursday is uh, the um, 100 Pipers, which in my opinion, I'm going to make a preview. I'm going to make a prediction. I think 100 Pipers is going to bust King Robert's mouth. It's going to bust him up because Scoresby never was impressing me. That was just like bland and blah. I can see why Diageo doesn't want to put it on their website. And they probably used the same recipe since it first came out in 1960. They probably just bought the recipe. They didn't worry too much about it. They just plug it in. You know, it's like plugging in a, literally like plugging an electric cord into a wall socket. That's how these companies produce this stuff. You say, no, it's an art. It's an art. Yeah. Uh, well, with Diageo and big companies like that, it's an algorithm. It's a science. It's a mathematical formula done by years of expertise. And they probably just kept making it the same way. And it was just bland and dull. And people bought it because they wanted something cheap. And it worked. But now they've decided to, to cast off a lot of their lower underperforming brands, which they, if you read the press releases, they kind of admitted that they didn't really do much to promote them. They were languishing, sort of like you can't promote. I guess you can't do everything, right? So they want to concentrate on their higher level, higher grade in more successful products. Like Seagram 7 is really doing well, apparently. They didn't want to sell Seagram 7, but the VO, they say, you could buy a Sazerac. And maybe Sazerac says they could do something with Scoresby. Shoot, they got a whole portfolio full of this kind of junk. I, I don't want to say junk, although I guess I could. <laughs> um, uh, but I think that the, the 100 Pipers is going to win because it seems like Heaven Hill's bottled scotch, wherever they're getting it from, is a little better. The 100 Pipers is a little bit better. It's not great. It has grain alcohol, but it's more like a cornbread. It's a little sweeter, a little nicer. And then the malts, and there's a lot of smoke, a lot of smoke with the um, 100 Pipers that gives it a nice sip across the board, you see, the way I look at it. The JW Dance is even better, I believe. So I think the JW Dance is going to really wreak havoc with the King Robert II. So, but that's why we do the blind taste test, just to find out. You think you know, 
but you may not know, but you will know when you do the blind taste test. Thanks for watching this video production. Have a very good college football day, although there is NBA and women and men's college basketball on today. Um, and the uh, NCAA FCS playoffs are on. And uh, there's a lot of excitement. So we got warm-ish weather down here, you know, like relatively warm. It's about 57 degrees. I got the window open. Uh, I got this little pullover, naturally two lane. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> it'll be up to about 72 today. Tomorrow, 78. And I know they're suffering with the very cold up north. Thanks for watching this video production.